All right, so here's my third F1R. Okay, this one's a little lighter. It's a little under half a, a, a gram. It's about 480 milligrams. And I'm not really trying to build lighter at this point because I think around a half a gram is good and I want to keep it sturdy. All right, I could use a little lighter wood on the ribs, like four pound, and on the fuselage and tail boom to get it down. But for now, I'm just keeping it as is since I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I haven't done any build videos on indoor, you know, mostly because there's already a lot of good ones out there. All right. Now, the other thing I should give is one disclaimer, is, and that is, this. is, I'm going to show you, this is the way I do things. I've tried many different ways. I've built indoor for many, many years. And I'm just saying, here's the way I like to do it, okay? It doesn't mean it's the best way or it's the only way, all right? So, you know, we don't need posts saying, here's a better way and things like that. I'm just saying this is the way I like to do it, kind of take it or leave it, all right? Hopefully it'll be helpful a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, well, I'm going to piece the video together in the order I actually do the building, okay? So first I always start with making all the forms, and you'll see those uh, as we go through the video, you know, the wing form and the prop form and stuff like that. And then I like to make the hardest parts first. So I usually start with the fuselage and the tail boom. And once I've got those going, I get going on the prop. All right, because those are the most difficult. Now, once you got those done, the rest of it is pretty easy. Wing stab rudder, pretty conventional. That goes together pretty fast. Okay, so uh, I'm going to let's get going on the fuselage. Now, I, I should say here, I kind of videoed it li in little pieces as I was building. So there might be some discontinuity. I kind of stuck it all together later on. All right, so I'm going to get going on the fuselage first and we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm getting ready to roll the fuselage and the tail boom. So I'll show you how I do that. Now, the first thing is I cut the balsa using form. So here's one for the fuselage, and then I have another one over here, and this is for the tail boom, okay? Now, you can figure out the thickness of this by, you know, pi times the diameter. The other thing you do is just wrap a piece of tape around the boom form or the fuselage and just mark it and see what it is empirically, all right? I usually test it on a little piece of scrap balsa before I uh, do it on the good stuff, okay? Now, I think it's important to use forms when you cut out the balsa because once you get the form right, then you'll get perfect a perfect cut every single time. Whereas if you measure it, you're going to be off a little bit, okay? So I like to do it with the forms. Now, we're going to roll it in tissue, and I'll just give you one or a little or two other little tips here. What I do is I cut the tissue with a straight edge on the end. Don't cut it with scissors because you really got to have that dead straight. The other thing you could probably see I do here is I just fold it over a little bit here, okay, because that makes it easier to wrap around when I put it on the form, all right? So I'm going to use 0.01 balsa for the fuselage and 0.008 for the tail boom. You really want to keep that light on F1R. Now they're both soaking, so I cut them and they're soaking in the sink. And, you know, I, I like to let it soak a half an hour, an hour at least, all right? And then I'll show you when that's done how I roll the fuselage. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to roll the fuselage. So what I'm going to roll it on is a 4 millimeter glass tube. I like to do it on the glass tube. Uh, you can see it's a little wet on the inside because I, sometimes I get glue on it and I wash it all off, all right? So the outside is nice and clean, okay? And uh, then what I like to do, uh, oh, uh, let me mention a couple of things. I tape it on the end here, all right? I like to do that just to kind of hold it in place. And you can see it's nice to have my little crease there because it just makes it very easy to roll it. You can, I'm not going to do it now, but you can roll it very, very tight, all right? Now, the other thing is I roll it a few times because I want the balsa to be a little bigger than the four millimeter. Four millimeters is less than 316, so I roll it a few times and it ends up coming out about 3 16 The other reason I do that is then you can glue it right, it'll still fit on here with a little extra space, and you can glue it right on the form, which is what I do. I'll show you that later, okay? Uh, now, the other little trick I have is I like to do it on the magnet board because you can use the magnets here, you see, to hold it down. So it really only takes one hand to get it nice and tight, all right? And uh, so what you do is you get the balsa. Now pat that off or dry it off a little bit. You don't want it too wet. And then I lie the balsa in there after I've rolled it a few times. 
what you can do is if you have the bolsa there, you can roll it and then hold it nice and tight with one hand, put the bolsa in, and then roll it the rest of the way. The magnets are really nice because you can keep pulling on it to keep it nice and tight, all right? And that way it comes out nice and smooth. Uh, on the, if you have little wrinkles in here, that's gonna show up in the bolsa. I don't think that structurally weakens it, but it just doesn't look nice, so I try to avoid that, all right? So I'll put it in here, I'll roll it up, the magnets are great, hold it nice and tight, and then of course when I get to the end, I just take off the magnets and then I tape it up and I let it dry. I'll show you that part next. Okay, so I have the fuselage rolled now and I taped it up, you know, to keep the tissue nice and tight. And then I'll let that dry for a while. I mean, if you could put it in the oven at 250 for a half an hour, but I, or you could just let it dry overnight. Or what I'm gonna do is you just put it by the radiator and two or three hours, that's it, it's dry. Okay, and, and I'll show you the next part. Now I'm getting ready to do the tail boom and it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the tail boom form I'm using here is from Indoor Free Flight Supply, okay? And the reason I'm using this is you can get it, uh, with the Harlan you get about 3 sixteenths of an inch to a little under an eighth, but then I have to make a plug to join it to the fuselage because that's 3 sixteenths. With this I can make it a little under 3 sixteenths and it tapers close to a sixteenth inch, actually it's pretty tight. And uh, so then I don't need the plug, I can just put it right in, alright? So you can see here, it's pretty much the same thing. The tissue with the little creased edge. I taped it here. I've got it on the magnet so I can pull it all nice and tight. It's especially important on the end here uh, where it you know, gets very narrow that you keep it really nice and tight, all right? And then I just roll it maybe twice. Uh, here you don't have to worry about making it bigger because you could just slide it up and down on the booms to make sure you have space to glue it and things like that. I'll show you that next, all right? And then I get the uh, bolsa again, you know, I usually tap it off a little bit with a paper towel, make sure it's not too wet, and I'll put that in, I'll wrap it, and then I'll just do the same thing as I did there, and I'll let it dry a few hours, and then we're ready to glue it. Alright, so now what I did is I took the fuselage off of the form, okay? You know, it sticks to the paper a little bit, you sort of just kind of wiggle it a little bit, very carefully and it'll eventually get loose and then you can just slide it right off which is what I did and now I put it back on the glass tube all right because I'm going to glue it now and what I do is I slip up I only do about an inch or two at a time okay and I move it off the glass tube so the glass tube is about here I just put a little very thin piece of balsa as a spacer and then I use uh, unthinned white glue here like tight bond uh, and I basically I put a dab of it now you never directly put it on the things I always put a dab of it on here as a piece of a coffee cup So it's got wax on it And then you can dip in your toothpick and just get a little bit and if you're careful you can just get a little bit along the edge there Okay, then I remove the spacer I slide it back and I kind of push it together a little bit all right one thing I like about the unthin type bond, I know a lot of indoor modelers are going to go, oh my goodness, but is it tacks right away. So you can just push it to make sure you get a butt joint. I don't want it overlapping. And it'll kind of tack right away. Now the other thing you got to do while you're doing that is spin the glass tube to make sure it doesn't stick to the tube. And then when that looks good, I, you can also use this. Oh, well, let me mention one thing here. When you're putting the glue on, this is one time you absolutely definitely should use magnifying glasses. And here's the ones I like, because it's a headband, and it's, uh, you know, you charge it, and it's got lights in the front as well, so you get really nice, and you really should put the glue on with this, because then you can see exactly what you're doing, okay? And then after I get the edge as I like, <clears throat> I, uh, I like to use these. This is, makes like a little sponge clamp, you see? I just get it, you can go to the hardware store and it's like, uh, you know, air conditioner insulation. This is an inch square. You cut a little slit in it and it makes a nice little clamp to help hold it closed, all right? So I'm gonna get working on this. So then I do the next piece. I just slide it up again, you know, same procedure until I've eventually, once I get halfway, I go the other way until I eventually have the whole tube glued. And the tail boom is pretty much the same procedure. I glue it right on the tail boom. And the other thing I like about that is you can let it cure overnight, let it sit and cure in it. The glue can cure thoroughly and everything, and it won't warp. You'll get a nice straight boom that way, okay? 
Okay, so I'm doing the same thing with the tail boom now. So what I did is I moved it up a little bit so it's a little loose on the form. And I put in my two spacers and you can see there's a nice edge there. So I'll put on my magnifying glasses and I'll get some glue on that, glue it. And then we have another inch or two to go, a couple more inches and we'll be done with the boom. Okay, so we have the fuselage done. Here it is on the glass boom. You can see it's nice and loose on there. It just fits. All right. So now I'm going to show you how I do the front and the rear hook. So here it is. And what I do is I get a piece of a hundredth inch thick sheet and I basically glue it to that. Okay. And uh, it's probably hard to see here, but this part is the part that slips into the fuselage. So that just fits perfectly. And it's a little bit higher over here. Because you got to make a slit from that point on, and that way it fills in the slit a little bit. All right. So for uh, let's see, this this is a dual bearing. Okay, you wrap it around the front, and then belt and bend it up, and make a little pigtail. Now I tend to be a little lazy, so you can also buy these from J and H Aerospace. All right. And this is a .008, which is really nice. However, for, for the prop shaft. And for the rear hook, I like to use .009. It's just a little bit stronger. Now you can see when I glue it in, I also have the uh, the shaft in there in essence, so I can make sure it's nice and parallel here, or possibly a little down thrust. Okay, and you got to be careful when you mount it in. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is mount it in, and I'll show you that. All right, so I got the front and back wires in, and I forgot to mention I use Ambroid to glue the wire to the balsa. And then I'm back to white glue in terms of, you know, sliding it into, inside the fuselage. Now you can see in the front here, I also put a little brace. All right. You don't want the, you know, angle changing there under the load of the rubber. I also put a little cap on it. Okay. And here's the back. Now when you put the hook in, I, I leave the cap off so I can sight from the back to the front. You really want to make sure that this is aligned with the front hook. Okay. And then I also put a little reinforcer in there. And then the last thing I do, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I put in um, little crosses. I put a hundred sheet going the other way to make like a little cross like that. Just to strengthen it up a little bit in the back. Okay. Now you can see the wire is here and here. This is for the tungsten bracing. So that's the next part. I'm going to put the tungsten bracing on. And then we're pretty much done with the fuselage. All right, so now I'm putting on the tungsten wire. Okay, you can see I put a little bracing post here. It's 0.04 to the 0.030. And I just use a little pin to put it, you put it in the middle. And also it's angled slightly to the right so that it clears the post, okay? Now I'm using 0.001 tungsten wire. It's on there, I don't think you can see it though. And here's what I do. Now I start at the back and I glue it at the back here. Not to the where it's going to go through, but actually uh, just down on the fuselage, all right? And I let that dry thoroughly. Now after that's dry, oh, well, here's what I should forgot to mention. I start by threading the whole thing through. So in other words, I thread it through here, bring it back, and then I thread it through there. Then I glue it to the bottom, okay? When that's dry, then I want to glue it here where the hole is. It's already in there. Now here's the thing. If you just pulled it tight here, it's going to be like at this angle. And then when you put it on the post, it's going to be like that. And it might loosen up or change or whatever. So you want it, that's my main advice is you want it at the same angle it's going to end up with. So what I do is I just pull it tight here. It's still connected. So I just roll that a little so that it's nice and snug. And I put it on the top post. It's on there now. And then I glue it here. Okay, so now it's at the right angle and I let that thoroughly dry. When that's dry, then I put a little dot of Ambroid here and I glue that there. And then finally, I'll cut it from the reel. I put a little weight, you know, just a couple grams. This little rubber thing is good. And uh, to keep tension on it, I hang that on the end. And then finally, I'll glue it in the front. Okay, and then we're pretty much all ready to go. Now, one thing you should really let with tungsten wires, you don't want to kink it. If you kink it, it's going to break. It has to stay straight and smooth. So don't tie a knot on there or anything like that. That's a big mistake. Keep it nice and straight and smooth. I just wrap it around down here a little bit and glue it. And then I let it go through the hooks and things like that. Okay. And as long as it's not kinked, it's fine. If you have a little piece and it's got a kink in it, just get rid of it because that's going to break. All right, so I, let's see. The last thing we have to do now is put in the tail boom. Here's the tail boom sitting over here. 
And what I do there is I just make a little cross slot. You've got to remember it's got the little crosshairs in the back. And I make a little cross slot here so you can just slip it in. And then I usually put maybe, uh, you know, a quarter inch of left and maybe a little bit of up, like an eighth inch or something like that. I need fairly tight circles where I'm flying, okay? And then the last thing I'll finally do is balance it and get in the wing post, and then we're almost ready to go. All right, so now I've mounted the tail boom to the fuselage, okay? And here's the joint, and what I do is I just put a few drops of thin ambroid around it, very little glue. And the reason I do that is because a lot of times at the field you might have to make an adjustment, like I might have to put a little bit more left on the boom or a little bit more up or something like that. And then what you could do is I bring some acetone to the field like this. You just put a couple drops on there, wait a few minutes, it'll soften the glue and you can reposition it, all right? And a lot of times I don't even need more glue, you just let it dry and you're fine. Or you could add a little bit more if you need it, okay? So after I get the tail boom on, then I put on the stab and the rudder, and then you can see them there. And I put the stab with about a quarter inch tilt on, the, I raise it on the port side. All right, and then I put the rudder over on top of it, nice and straight. And then the last thing I do is I put in the wing post, okay? Because after I get it all together, I have to balance it with the rubber and the prop. And you probably can't see it, but I just noted where the center of gravity was. And then I have a little uh, spreadsheet I use that gives me constant margin of stability. Go to Hip Pocket Aeronautics, you'll see that. And that tells me, you know, given the center of gravity, here's where you should put the rear post, all right? So I put the rear post in. I just use a little pin here, actually, to prick the balsa. Now make sure you got it nice and perpendicular this way and even more importantly from the front direction should line up with the rudder okay and I put in the post and then I just fix it with a little bit of ambroid I put a dot on the top and a dot on the bottom and the same with the front one after I get the rear one in and again the reason I do that is I've had sometimes the fuselage breaks you could just hit these with acetone in fact all three of these posts here were are recycled from another one I had so you can loosen them up with the acetone and then reuse them, okay? I reuse the nose bearing too. All right, so uh, I think that's about it. Okay, we need a wing and we're ready to go. <laughs> Where's Ian? Oh, he's in the background. <laughs> I got to get them all three in one shot here. I'm sure he's, yeah, he's in there too. That's pretty yeah. funny. I think I'm done climbing. Let me just get at it. <laughs> there you go. Now I'm not climbing anymore. I'm okay.